Eric Carper. You're recognized uh, for your questions. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, there is a, um, a river that separates my native state of West Virginia with uh, Ohio, and there are a number of bridges that uh, cross and connect uh, those two states, West Virginia and Ohio, where I went to college. And uh, I was wondering um, uh, maybe if Congressman Ray Hall could share, us, uh, share with us the name of uh, one of those bridges. I think it might be close to Huntington. Do you, would you know who that might be? Who's that name, bridge named after? I think it's called Nahal. Uh, it's <laughs> Ray Hall. Well, it's yes, Ray uh, Hall. yes, it's your bridge, Harper. isn't it? That bridge is named after me, and you'll be happy to know there are no bullet holes in the sign to this day. That's, that's good. That's good. That's, I've uh, been Delaware's treasurer, congressman, governor, senator, was naval flight officer for 20 years before that. You know how, how many things are named after me in Delaware? None. And you've got your own bridge, and, uh, and I'm a native of West Virginia. So. <laughs> I know you're a native of my hometown. <laughs> there you go. Beckley. Beckley boy. Uh, great to see you. And Good this to see you is again, uh, you're always, always uh, a pleasure to cross paths with you. I, um, that was my, my, my first question. I just wanted to give that one to you as a softball. And now I'm going to turn to Ms. Albert, if I can, for the, really the tough questioning. Uh, Ms. Albert, thanks for joining us uh, today. And uh, I, I, I serve on this committee. In, uh, I think I'm the longest serving person who serves on this committee uh, these days. And um, my chair of the committee on en environment and public works, uh, which has oversight, as you may know, over public, public uh, buildings. And I'm fairly familiar with GSA's federal um, real uh, property footprint and the need for efficient uh, property disposal. I think it was uh, October of last year, October 22, that uh, GAO uh, released a report that recommended uh, that the GSA develop a process to uh, better apply lessons learned from 2019 to 2021 uh, rounds of disposals required by the uh, Federal Asset Sales and Transfer Act to improve results in the uh, 2024 round of disposal. My question for you, Ms. Ms. Albert, is, is this. Can you just please share with us the actions that GSA has taken or plans to take in order to incorporate lessons learned from the first two rounds of FASTA ahead of the final 2024 round? Yeah, thank you so much, and thank you also for your leadership on the PW committee. Um, Love you are. It. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I believe that uh, many of the issues that we experienced in the first two rounds and a little bit of the disconnection uh, that the parties had are at least identified now. Uh, I personally um, have met with uh, the PBRB uh, several times and am committed to making sure that uh, the lessons learned get incorporated into future rounds. Um, I believe that there are a number of proposals that will make the, the next round uh, more successful uh, than the past rounds, um, and uh, Representative Ray Hall's alluded to some of those. Um, but uh, my primary interest in moving forward and thinking about uh, how we should prepare uh, this last round uh, for success is to identify what we're trying to prove. What's the proof of concept that this next round can bring to bear? Is it about uh, forward funding agency moves and how quickly does that accelerate the process? Is it um, the disposition strategy, um, marketing, um, or these other activities that really generate greater interest. Uh, I think that uh, we're well positioned at this point to have conversations about what we think this next round of projects uh, can uh, prove and demonstrate, um, and I have confidence that we'll be able to align in that. Great. Good, thank you. I have a, a second question for you and then maybe another question for another uh, member of the panel, but my second question for, uh, for you, Ms. Albert, uh, deals with space utilization and disposal uh, challenges. Through, uh, though uh, federal, I want to say though, though I think the federal assets, uh, the, the FASTA was signed into law, in, I think it was in 2016, but uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic has dramatically changed, as you know, changed the needs for office space due to uh, increased hybrid and remote uh, work options. We're hearing from cities all over the country where they have uh, office space that they used to rent robustly, that a lot of it's uh, thinning out and, and it's causing really a hardship for uh, city uh, governments to meet their, meet their budgets, raise their budgets. But still, it's, it's critical that the agencies accurately report space utilization needs in order to efficiently dispose of unused and underused uh, uh, properties. And here's uh, my, my question. In, in your view, have agencies been reporting properties for disposal in a way that accurately reflects their current space needs. I'll say that again. 
in your view, have agencies been reporting properties uh, for disposal in a way that accurately reflects um, their current space needs? And a, a, a follow-up to that will be, how is the GSA helping agencies balance flexibility uh, to account for uncertain future space needs while improving the efficiency of the property disposal process? Sort of a two-part question. Thank you. I might need to ask you for the second uh, part when I'm done here. with the first. Um, uh, right now, um, I describe uh, what's happened in the marketplace and in workplaces as the swinging of the pendulum. We were starting in one place uh, before the pandemic. The pandemic almost swung to the exact opposite uh, side of the scale where everybody, due to the emergency uh, state that we were in, uh, needed to work from home. And so right now, the pendulum is swinging back, but we don't yet know where the final resting place is. To me, as a property manager um, and as a, what I, a portfolio manager, um, we don't need to know the exact number because at a portfolio, the, say, the scale, the size of the federal governments and of GSAs, there's a lot of work that we can be doing now to create the practices and the nimbleness that we believe we need to address the savings and the space um, optimization that we can over the next five to 10 years. So. Um, Pre-pandemic, we knew that there was an excess of space. Um, this is uh, pretty well documented. Um, and right now, uh, with OMB's uh, recent memorandum asking agencies to report out on, um, you know, what their uh, uh, organizational um, strategy is for workforce, um, that includes telework, but it includes other organizational performance um, uh, initiatives. Uh, we're going to continue over the next year, I would say, to understand where that pendulum is finally going to rest. I will say, as a asset manager and proper and portfolio manager, I don't need to wait completely for a final answer. But agencies, before they're willing to give up space, will want to have a better understanding of how they plan to operate uh, for the next uh, term. I just want to um, point out. Uh, one activity in particular that I believe is gonna become increasingly important, and you referenced it. We manage our owned facilities. We also manage a very significant lease portfolio. And uh, our successes in um, consolidating leases uh, into both federally owned space as well as into other leases has saved the government money over the past five years to the tune of $6.5 billion. We've reduced the lease portfolio by over 13 million square feet. In the last five years- How much? How much? Six, 13 million square feet. We've also- That's about the size of Delaware. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> no, just joking. We're still growing. <laughs> The other, uh, we have also reduced the owned portfolio in the last five years by close to 13 million square feet. So we are implementing today and still the necessary consolidation actions that were planned pre-pandemic. And uh, if we can get access to some of the ideas and uh, authorities that we've mentioned today that GSA has proposed in, our, proposed in our FY24 budget, then I believe we can be very well uh, poised to deal with any increase in disposal actions or lease consolidation actions uh, that we anticipate in the future. Good. My time has more than expired, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, being uh, lenient. And I, I'd like to sit, uh, submit a couple of questions for the record. I want to make sure that you had, a, 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 if, you're, if you're satisfied with all that you, did you have time to, to, to do my follow up question, which was how is uh, the GSA helping agencies balance flexibility? Uh, to uh, account for uncertain future space needs while improving the, the efficiency of the property disposal process. I, you asked me to repeat that, and I, I, if I could just get you a short answer to that. Sure. Um, we are offering um, unique services right now, uh, both in the form of access to consultants who are experts in both portfolio optimization as well as space planning. Um, we also have been much more, I would say, innovative in terms of offering access to private co-working space, and we are right now considering how to execute and pilot federal co-working space, again, to allow and give access to flexible space that agencies need now at a lower price. Um, we've uh, had a big announcement and certainly invite uh, you and any other member of the committee to come to our Workplace Innovation Lab where we are enticing and demonstrating to agencies, it's the carrot side of our business, 
how can you do this? What does hybrid workplace look like? Um, it includes uh, seamless and frictionless access to technology so somebody can work as effectively in the office as they do from their home, as they do from their project site. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, I think a really uh, exciting offering that we're going to be sharing is um, transparency um, of our leased and owned inventory so that agencies can see in advance when leases are expiring by other agencies. And therefore, when they have a bigger picture and broader picture of what the federal uh, uh, long-term federal holdings are, they can uh, more confidently let go of the space that they have where uh, leases might be expiring now. There, there's many components to effective management, but we are working and offering customers a lot of tools to help them more uh, effectively and more quickly plan what their future workplace needs are. That's great. Mr. Chairman, again, I uh, appreciate the time uh, to answer, uh, to ask these questions and to hear responses. Uh, Mr. Ms. Maroney, I could barely see your lips moving when she spoke. And, uh, and I would say to my friend, uh, Nikki Jell, that's what we call him in West, in West Virginia. It's great uh, to see you again. Thank you all. all your years of service. And you just, you never changed. You never changed. Great to see you, buddy. Take care. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Carper. And I'd also like to uh, 